Uh, well, guys, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. And uh, yeah. congratulations with everything. This, this must be a, a fantastic yet slightly strange experience given how the film's been released and, and what's been going on. Yeah, yeah, it's the biggest silver lining for us. I mean, it was like, you know, you get news that the world might be ending. And, you know, on a side note, it's like the little selfish fil filmmaker for a moment, you're like, oh, no, our release date is May 1st, and we're not going to come out in our 10 little theaters. And then it turns into this thing where we got put in drive-ins, and it just kind of exploded. Um, just, you know, never expected it, you know, and stuff. And like, we were, of course, we got to shut down. We can't, our movie can't come out. People just have to see it on VOD. But it ended up being like a you know, the perfect drive-in movie for right now. <laughs> so. Yeah, it, was, it is a strange, because obviously in the, we haven't got many in the UK. I think they've started to, to open some up now because they've seen oh, the, cool. obviously your, your, your movie and obviously they've done a few of these sort of screen alongs like Lionsgate have screened La La Land and Bend It Like oh, Back oh, and stuff well, like cool. that. So they, I think yeah. they're doing something like that. But I think it's because of, in a strange way, because of you guys kind of setting the trend in some strange way. So <laughs> actually, like, guess maybe what? there People is some money to, to be a made. movie with no name actors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great. They've got they've got the wretched. I oh, will. We'll just show La La Land. It's fun. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but how was? I mean, how was? How did that all come about? How did they kind of pitch you the idea of of, of doing it that way? Or was it kind of something that the studio or the your distributors had kind of no. decided to do? It just sort of evolved. We we initially, we were going to play in like 10 to 15 just normal theaters right as this hit. And they had this idea um, because we didn't know drive-ins were even an option. And, you know, we IFC basically said like, let's, let's try and roll out to a couple of drive-ins. Like, that'd be cool. And we thought it was just going to be a consolation prize. We're like, okay, well, at least we're going to get to be somewhere before people just see it on their TVs. And... Um, yeah, we. I don't think IFC necessarily expected it to take off even the way it did because we rolled out to like 12 drive-ins and there weren't that many open. And then each week it just kept expanding. It went to like 20 something, then like 50. And now we're at like, I think close to 100 drive-ins somewhere in that ballpark. It keeps fluctuating, yeah. but it's <clears throat> week six and it just, we never... we're going into week seven <laughs> of playing, which is crazy. And the so. turnout's been, I guess, like unprecedented. Like, I guess people just keep showing up. Yeah. Um, so word of mouth, I think, is sort of taken over too. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think if we sucked after two weeks, nobody would be showing up. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just be yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think you, I think I read that you guys share a record with Black Panther of all things and being being like by, by default, by, yeah, yeah. but is number that, one for what mean? five or six weeks or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean. I think we fought harder for it, but no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Drew and I joke about it because there's all these things about us being like, you know, number one for five weeks and being in the records. And we're kind of like, yep, we're going to be that weird, like, Jeopardy question, like, 10 years from now. Like, what was the lowest grossing number one movie for five weeks or something <laughs> like that? Five or six weeks. And I'm like, I'm happy to be that question. I, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I wonder now what they're going to put on the DVD or Blu-ray box. You know, sometimes they put the number one, the US number one here. I wonder what they're going to put oh on, on yours. Yeah. That's going to be that's going to be pretty yeah. cool, right? <laughs> With an asterisk that just says like Our... COVID-19 really. No, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. Expectations are so dangerous with movies in general. Like we love like the best best time ever is showing our movie when people don't know a thing about it like they just show up there whoa yeah you know? yeah that was like the best thing about the festivals is lots of times people didn't know anything about it so you almost like it, when you have the hype of it was number one for this song all of a sudden I'm like oh i don't want people going in preloaded like that i just want them to just be like it's a horror movie i, I even like it if they don't even know it's like a witch creature feature it's even so better. hopefully they don't put like better than avatar yeah. in the box <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, to be yeah. fair, there's a lot of people out there that don't like Avatar, that pay to see yeah. Avatar, that don't yeah. like Avatar, yeah. but don't don't yeah. tell James Cameron because he might <laughs> he might stop your career, our careers and our tracks. Yeah. <laughs> he has that power. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, in terms of, it sounds like, it, in modern world, it sounds like such a feeble number in some respects. And this is no disrespect to your movie, but a million dollars at the drive-ins is incredible. I mean, you must yeah. be, did you think you were going to do that business if you'd have just been in the 10 or 12, I mean, that must be an no, incredible I mean, feeling that it's gone, gone just that far. 
like as indie filmmakers, you always hope, and it's kind of from a different age is like, you hope that your movie's going to be seen by a handful of people, then word of mouth will spread so crazy and you'll blow up. But that kind of is so it's not even really it's like the 1% anymore. of the 1% of it, the it indie happened movies. with like yeah. clerks back in the day and some other movies, but it doesn't really happen anymore. The, it, you, you kind of need a massive marketing budget to get your movie out there. So for us, it's or a pandemic or no, a crazy no, act of God, yeah, crazy, you really yeah. do need to do less. You, the only way to get your movie out there is if you sort of have a lucky thing where your movie strikes in some form of the zeitgeist. Like maybe the person that's in your movie, some crazy thing happens to them that just sparks. Yeah. It's, I think it was just a mix of us where like, you know, all the movies moved away because they couldn't be released and that we were kind of like the perfect drive-in movie because we're like a fun creature feature and that's kind of perfect for the drive-in and then what was good is that created that like first week or two week window of people reviewing it or going to the drive-in and seeing it. And then word of mouth kind of just took hold because, you know, people liked it and there also wasn't all this other stuff to compete with at the same time. So it just gave us like, I think it proves the fact that smaller movies can be embraced by a larger audience. They just get swallowed up by all the noise of everything else that has giant marketing budgets, you know, yeah. it's just, but if they get a chance to be seen, they can catch on and they can be well loved too. It's, it's just a matter of that, you know, we didn't, we were supposed to have Black Widow coming out the same day as us. And, you know, I know half the press and stuff wouldn't have covered us if Black Widow was coming out the exact same time. So, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I think at the time, you know, you would have been, it would have been Black Widow. I think Mulan was due to come out, Bond was yeah. due to come out. So you, you, you would have, again, not no disrespect to you guys, but the, you know, the indie movies, they struggled to get as you say, struggled to get any notice because everyone's focused on, oh, it's Daniel Craig's last James Bond. Everyone's going to see Yeah, yeah. This. And yeah. not only do they have bigger stars and branding and all these other things, but they also have like, that would have been like $500 million worth of marketing that we yeah. would have had to compete with between those two movies. Yeah, <laughs> Easy. Just, uh, just two, yeah, just those yeah. two. Uh, and I'd and be surprised if there was more than like 20 grand spent on marketing on our film. On our movie, <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of type thing, so so yeah. in a weird way, like the drive-ins has sort of been this like weird, way that we kind of back route got marketing for our movie because yeah. it was sort of a way that it drew people out and then word of mouth sort of hooked yeah and i also think spreading. we're just in such a time now where like everything moves so fast with theatrical releases like a big giant movie comes out and one week later another big giant movie comes out and so you, you never get a chance to breathe and movies aren't like the way they used to be where they come out and they play for like five six months to a year now it's like plays for a couple of weeks and yeah, it's maybe still in a few places, but it kind of disappears really fast. And then it's streaming like three months later, you know? So and we're, we're surprised yeah. we've been going six weeks strong that people are yeah. still turning out and that it's like, you know, that's, yeah. that's a pretty long life for a movie, non quarantine. Yeah. Or, yeah. Days. It's a long life for any type of movie. Like the second like, week yeah. we were like, Oh, somebody else is going to figure this out. There's going to be some other like indie, like darling, horror movie or something that's gonna knock I just think out. people weren't ready to put it out fast enough is what it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I do want to ask you about the movie, obviously. I mean, I watched it last night. I really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It's, oh, cool. Oh, it, it's yeah. kind of the perfect horror film that I like. And it's a horror film, but it it touches into my childhood and my formative years as an 80s kid. And it, it touches on a lot yeah. of like Fright Night and People Dead and all those fantastic movies that, that yeah. I were able to mix the horror with with a great story and a bit of comedy and a little bit of you know here and there so i just wondered whether and obviously i've read this just before i was talking to you about your your dad obviously working with, with sam raimi i wondered how influential sam raimi's work was on the 80s work was on on the movie because there's there's a fantastic little through line through through the movie yeah yeah i mean it was it was huge just because those guys kind of taught us that you could make independent films because they all piled into our basement to finish the end sequence of evil dead and from Drew and I's perspective as kids watching all those guys, we were just like, oh, that's how you make a movie. You just do it yourself. You know, it's very DIY. So we, we took that from them, but also just the movie was really inspiring because it's an awesome movie. Um, but I think also the inspiration of that time period of Fright Night and all that stuff is that horror movies can be dark, but they can also be fun. Mm -hmm. They can be like thrill ride fun movies. I love a really good dark slow burn horror movie but I don't want just those. And those are like the popular kind of films lately. And I love a lot of them. I think they're great, but I, I still miss the fun horror of like Fright Night or a Scream Gremlins and, or Scream yeah. or, and stuff like that. So I think there's room for all of it. So I think that's kind of where we, we were trying to land. We, honestly, we were just trying to make a movie we liked. Yeah. We were just like, this is what we like. We wrote the script. There was no like 
thinking ahead, like, let's try to make it like this movie or try to make the movie that makes money. Or he's like, I just want to make a cool witch movie with like new rules because no one's really defined that that much. So I think there's room to do something new. So that was the that was the thinking. But we're it. we're massively inspired by <clears throat> Sam Raimi. Yeah. Um, I don't. It's the it's the reference that people. I mean, people know because our dad. But like, we just grew up with that lore yeah. of every little bit of like their career path and like each movie. Like we, you know, we grew up with the fact that like our dad did the sort of final meltdown sequence and that it was like the ending. Like that movie. Like Sam said, like my movie didn't have an ending without that. Like it never would have blown up. Um, but we kind of grew up with like this mythology about all the different nuts and bolts of them making the movie that just inspired the hell out of us because yeah. it it just was such a scrappy process of a bunch of teenagers yeah. getting together to do a creative thing and just and we like being scrappy too like even when we made the film I mean <clears throat> Drew and I's we were all over the movie different like we even like the cave set that was built our production designer was like completely shocked because the day we, all put we it did together. that, we showed up to t get it off the truck and like put it together and stuff like that. And they're like, the directors are here. I'm loading the cave set. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I got some gloves and I can get Drew and my dad to show up and we can kind of help set up the cave. And that's, we just kind of see movies as like, kind of like, yeah, everybody's all in. So that's that we kind of took that from those guys on the Evil Dead set. So. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you happy that people have, have, have kind of, said that about the movie that they've compared it to to those movies and also obviously i mean obviously with the cave and everything there's obviously a little feel of stranger things about it obviously it's such a big phenomenon these days yeah. that you can't yeah, yeah escape yeah. anything 80s that isn't oh it's just, everyone is just like stranger things as if the 80s didn't exist before stranger things came around yeah <laughs> are you uh, yeah yeah, are you, yeah you must be it's, you must be delighted that they're that they're comparing stuff to it given that that's what your background is and you're, you've been brought up on if you like yeah yeah we love that it, it, like all the comparisons it's funny there's been so many comparisons to this movie like people are like what about this movie there's actually been even a handful that i haven't seen which is pretty funny yeah <laughs> um the only ones that were really i i think like somewhat intentional um our rear window we wanted to do a little nod with him having a cast yeah and then we you know fright night i think the plot of that movie has always just been sort of ingrained in us because we watched that movie to death when we were kids yeah, so it's I think such a good story the and structure so well. definitely and the comedy elements so we want some levity in ours too by that. Stuff, yeah. um but yeah i mean people <clears throat> busted out every you know <laughs> yeah influence yeah. it is kind of funny imagine. though because you also realize like whenever you make something there's always that flavor is kind of in the air so like when we i think when we wrote it we hadn't seen Stranger Things or any of the cave stuff yet, but then you just kind of see it kind of, you know, you realize like everybody who grew up in that time has all these things in their brain that they just kind of were drawn to, you know? So it's cool. Yeah. I know. I love, I love the thing I love about the movie. I love this about like, obviously in the eighties, it was very different, but I love that the movie was very practical and that, that you know, the, the boo hag and everything was, it felt like mm -hmm. someone was doing it and it felt, you know, real locations and there wasn't yeah. sort of any trickery going on, which only adds to the kind of rawness of it when it's, and the scariness of it, when it, when it, you know, everything goes, goes down, if you like, I mean, that it must be liberating to be able to do that stuff, even though you're on a tight budget, as you say, to get your hands dirty and yeah. just, just do everything as best you can, you doing it yourself. Yeah, yeah, we love practical effects. I mean, they're always like amazing and they work especially well with horror movies in particular. Yeah. Um, and we love shooting in practical locations too, because like you said, it just gives it this grounded feeling and the practical effects do too, because when you shoot them and given, we have to like, you have to plan those so much more than like, <clears throat> a digital effect because you have to know exactly what angles you're going to see it from but the actors appreciate it the dp appreciates it because you get to throw real light on it they get to react to something that's not a you know a tennis ball in front of a green screen you know it, it just becomes so much more and then you're always happy in the editing room because you look at the results and you're just like my god that looks so good you know that looks so good we don't you know and and even when we we did like the slightest bit of digital on some things, but it was always just like tweaking a good effect, you know? And, and honestly, most of the digital on our movie is like removing a boom mic shadow or <laughs> compositing two shots together. There's like no creature animation or anything like that. That's just a really good, like person, the, our, our actress Madeline Sutton acting out the movements and really nice makeup, you know? So it's, it's, it's very cool. Yeah, and I, I obviously what I want to uh, give anything away, but obviously the, the film goes certain places and there's certain nods and then certain things happen towards the end. I mean, given what's been going on, have you, has there been any talk of you going back to do another one? Would you want to, or, or is this something that you're kind of like, this is just our kind of one in, one out. We've got other stories to, to tell first. 
we have a lot of other stories and things that we're excited about that we're trying to get going right now, but um, there, we, we definitely have a ton of ideas for sequels. That was never the intent. Like we just made the best movie we could. Um, but we have, you know, dozens of ideas that just didn't fit into this movie or were like too big to fit in this movie, to be honest, yeah. um, that we would love to explore. Yeah, there's just even some practical effects things that were a little extra challenging that would require a little bit better of a budget that we were so excited to try to do, but we just, it wasn't feasible on this one. So there's a lot of cool ideas. And we worked out the witch's mythology pretty extensively that we have a lot of room to do more. So, so we, we are excited about the idea of a chance of doing one just cause you know, it's funny, you finish this one and you're just like, I just wanna try to do it again. And I want to try to do even better, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's like, you just want to beat your last one, you know? <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I have to say huge congratulations again. I mean, it's been, an, it's been a phenomenal, crazy time, but also for you guys, I mean, this is like your calling card now, isn't it? It's like, we're the guys that made, made that, that amazing yeah. drive-in movie in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. We just want to make more stuff. We're just excited to get something else going. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So yeah. hopefully this makes it a little easier each time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We keep saying that every time we make a movie, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I really, I really love the movie, and uh, absolute pleasure to talk to you both. Uh, and oh, I hope too, that uh, I hope that it continues, and and when when Tenet and Mulan come out, people still go and see your movie, which will be yeah, yeah, be so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> fingers, fingers, fingers crossed, uh, guys. Absolute yeah. pleasure to talk to you, and uh, stay you safe. Too, uh, but uh, thanks so much for your time. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, no worries. Take care. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers. Right, you, Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You